Space Lab Huntsville for Fred. Go ahead, Clint. Yeah, Fred, just wanted to check and see where you are, and also I have an update to your PCAP after the deorbit brief. This is Mission Control Houston. This uh, live television from Columbia shows uh, the problem with the... And then just so that you know, at that time there wasn't any uh, correlation with the jet firing or any other disturbance. Yeah, I copy it. This is just going on and on now. Yeah, this is what it was like uh, when we first powered it up. It lasted probably for a good, uh, I'd say, three, four minutes. Well, you know the discussion we're having, obviously. We're going to hand it off to the next team, uh, but we have a potential IFM here. And, uh, if you don't think we understand. I'm sorry, I think I cut you out. That kind of feels good to be strapped back in the seat. You know, uh, we'll leave the video up. We're going to stop the Shaw maneuver in about a minute and a half with this gold clip floating, and you, you'll see what the acceleration will do to it. Oh, that'll be great. Thanks. When we're done with the yaw maneuvers here, we'll send up your entry messages. We want to have good un uninterrupted comm. All right, Dave. Currently, uh, Columbia is in the midst of a... Uh, Yaw maneuver, um, one of uh, several maneuvers that it's been performing over the past few minutes. Morning, Bravo. Yeah, I'm sure that's bothering you more than me right now. Too windy. These maneuvers uh, for the space acceleration measurement system uh, experiment on board, uh, measuring. Uh, the various rates of acceleration on board the spacecraft uh, during such maneuvers. Again, uh, earlier Columbia performed a roll maneuver, a 360 degree roll. Now it's uh, been performing a 360 degree yaw maneuver, maneuvering at uh, about a degree per second. Uh, it's nearing uh, the end of that maneuver, uh, at which point uh, pilot Kent Rominger will stop. Uh, got some air currents to work with there. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're continuing to receive live television from Columbia. Columbia we're handing over in the control center. Uh, Orbit 1 is our last shift for Brian and I, but the Orbit 1 team is your entry team. In fact, uh, Blaine and Rich are here now. And we're handing over now to Story and John Shannon in out Orbit 4. 
All right, Dave, it was great working with all of you today. Uh, I guess having that sim soup on console got us into a little bit of trouble with CRT, too. Maybe you should leave him home next time. But we really enjoyed working with you all. I, I thought it went pretty smooth with the little problems we had uh, going through the checkout and the hot fire. Yeah, it got pretty busy, and you guys did a great job keeping up with it with the malfunctions. So uh, we've really enjoyed it, and it, it did start to feel like a sim. Uh, handing over to Story. Okay. Talk to you at home. In uh, this uh, television live from Columbia, as Columbia passes uh, just off the Cape of Africa, uh, the southern tip of that continent, currently at an altitude of 100 and 170 statute miles. On board uh, the red team, continuing uh, through the early hours of their 12-hour shift. Flight day uh, 16, uh, four members of the red team. Hey, Slab Huntsville. We have a uh, live module video from TVC2 in the T1 position. Hi, Al. So the crystal growth furnace uh, gets to be the last uh, major experiment system to uh, shut down, and it has been running for the longest continuous period of operation during, during this uh, U.S. microgravity laboratory. And uh, the furnace uh, used that time for uh, doing high temperature materials processing research. They uh, were able to successfully process eight samples of uh, the specialized types of electronic materials known as semiconductors. And for the last two samples that, that were run in the crystal growth furnace, uh, material known as germanium gallium, uh, those last two runs were intended uh, not so much for producing the crystalline material itself because of uh, uh, of any uh, special uh, interest in it, but rather as part of a, a particular engineering test that uh, one group wanted to perform with the crystal growth furnace. And uh, get all their equipment uh, prepared for uh, sending it back to their uh, home base institutions. In the case of the uh, surface tension team, uh, their equipment coming from the NASA Lewis Research Center. And uh, so those uh, members of the science teams who have uh, been on duty here for uh, more than two weeks now will be uh, preparing to return to their home institutions at different places around the United States. And uh, shortly, um, fairly soon after Columbia's landing, they will uh, be uh, getting the data that in some cases has to be physically brought back by the orbiter. For instance, all the tapes that have been uh, videotaped on board will be eagerly awaited in the uh, lower portion of the screen. Uh, Columbia's direction of travel now being uh, south 
and easterly a little more to the east as it uh, starts to approach the southernmost point of the current orbit, uh, currently at about uh, 30 degrees south latitude and starting to uh, swing uh, more in a direct easterly direction. Since this uh, orbit for the STS-73 flight is a 39 degree inclination orbit, And, uh, and Colombia is now getting fairly close to the uh, eastern coast of South America, just about at the uh, southernmost uh, point of uh, the vast country of Brazil. Uh, should be somewhere uh, over the uh, large city of uh, Sao Paulo. And looking down on the coast now, as it uh, heads out over the Atlantic Ocean, we see the coastline of uh, South America there with cloudiness picking up uh, just as uh, the uh, land mass turns to uh, ocean. And the view towards the horizon here would be back in the direction that uh, Columbia has just flown over. Uh, aiming the camera out of the payload bay, we get a good view towards the west over a large portion of uh, central and uh, somewhat southern uh, South America. Payload bay camera lens uh, zoomed to a wide angle. We start to see the uh, not only the broad areas of the South Atlantic spread out below Columbia, but the Space Lab module where uh, crew members uh, over the past uh, 14 days and, uh, and a little over, uh, close to 15 days, have been uh, uh, using that module as a workplace in space, doing a variety of uh, different types of science operations in uh, a laboratory that has been very carefully assembled over uh, about a three-year process, the planning and preparation for this mission extended over uh, roughly three years in uh, getting these experiment systems uh, all ready. And uh, that uh, preparation and uh, planning and training that uh, went into a flight like this, uh, as we've seen now, paid off uh, with uh, That's stowaway, yes. Stowaway is Dave. This is uh, one of the the uh, experiments in the CGF is his, and he's also a backup payload specialist and uh, talking to us today. Yeah, I've been talking to him earlier. And is that an inverse crystal growth maneuver there? That's a SACA, a SACO instead of a SACA. I was trying hard to avoid the easy one.
putting into place a uh, procedure to uh, just make sure that that flexible glove box uh, won't be uh, uh, loose during uh, deorbital landing. And uh, that being done, uh, that is the last major uh, operation uh, where the crew has to actually do much in a hands-on sense for the uh, experiment systems. And this is all part of uh, the process of uh, getting the laboratory uh, workshop that the crew members have been using now for uh, the last uh, more than two weeks, uh, getting it all set for uh, the conclusion of the mission. Applause for the amazing Sako. And yes, Sal, this is the fulfillment of a dream, huh? This is Space Lab Operations Control, Huntsville. And uh, we'll give you a minute and a half to a teacher's handover. And we continue to uh, get live downlink video. We will be uh, having an interruption of that shortly, however, as uh, Columbia comes up to the uh, handover point or transition from the Western Tracking and Data Relay satellite to the Eastern. But uh, while we do have it, uh, we're using that downlink uh, uh, signal capability to uh, take these Earth views over the uh, extreme eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean. And uh, the, uh, that being the eastern Pacific Ocean and uh, the point in the orbit, uh, which is about the furthest south that uh, Columbia flies. Uh, a spacecraft is uh, just about to come up on the 39 degree uh, south latitude uh, portion of this orbit.